this airplane comes to us from and for our friends to the north, eh? Uh, this is the Avro Arrow. Um, a revolutionary design, very, very sophisticated airplane that came out of the 50s. It, the program began in the early 50s and went on to the late 50s. Uh, the plane was designed as an interceptor. So its job was as soon as, as Soviet uh, bombers were detected, coming from the north, coming from the Arctic and over Greenland, it would fly north as fast as it could and uh, take those bombers out before they got to the heavily populated areas to the south. Uh, the idea was purely to shoot down bombers. It's a very large airplane, so it would have had a large uh, uh, signature on radar. However, that didn't matter because the war was already started by the time this thing was gonna be flying. Uh, the Canadians, basically built an airplane that was comparable to anything in the world. The Avro Corporation did a great job of designing a plane. They put everything they had into it. And this plane was as capable as any airplane in the world for what it did. It was uh, as good as the Delta Dart uh, F-106, um, uh, probably as good as the F-104 Starfighter. Um, we've done that plane beforehand. Um, it was very good at its job and could go almost Mach 2, uh, but in 1959, the Canadian Prime Minister got, that got elected just said, you know what, we're canceling the program. And that's because of this other side to these uh, sophisticated airplanes. Um, they're very expensive. And this plane was not only going to be expensive to build, it was going to be expensive to operate uh, because it ran on lots of fuel. Uh, huge fuel tanks, and these are extra fuel tanks, by the way, because it had to go so far north um, on its mission. And Canadian Prime Minister came in and said, we're just not going to do it. It's going to be too expensive. That decision was basically it put Avro out of business because they had put everything into this. And this is sad because the, the Canadians have a very strong heritage in building airplanes. They've got the, the uh, de Havilland Company. You know, there was a number of companies that were building planes for World War II, and there were a number of jet fighters and interceptors that were in design in Canada, and all of those things just went by the wayside with this. It basically put the Canadians out of the jet fighter and interceptor industry. Um, they've still gone on to build great airplanes, you know, the whole, they, they dominate the uh, uh, regional jet market now and so forth, and obviously you know, Otter and so forth are, are great airplanes, but they never got back into this industry. And essentially it was decided that, that by, it's been realized that by putting this company out, nobody was ever gonna try in Canada again to do this. So all those engineers went off to Boeing and so forth and Lockheed and, and that's that. Uh, they've never done it um, since. But this was a very capable airplane. They only made a few of them um, just as test planes, but plane could fly at, you know, uh, almost Mach 2. They were going to have a design that could go at Mach 2. By the way, it didn't even have a machine gun on it. Because of its mission, it was just going to fire missiles uh, to shoot down those bombers that were coming. And uh, uh, the, the, you know, there was no need for a gun. Um, but that's it. It's the Avro Arrow. Great plane out of Canada. Only a few of them flew. And unfortunately, all of them, I think, now are just in museums. What was the most challenging part? Challenging part of these boxes up front for the air intakes because I made them smooth all the way around. And the other thing is, uh, my boo knows I the the uh, I made the landing gear, which is very doily look. It's very small, but somehow it was strong enough. Um, landing gear hinges uh, so that you know it can be all the weight can be on both wheels, both when it lands and when when it takes off. So you know both both wheels on each side are making contact when it comes in. Good job, boo. Avro Arrow.